welcome back to the Be More podcast, where we inspire you to be a little bit more of every role within the Salesforce ecosystem and beyond. For today's session, we are exploring what it takes to be more hospitality in a predominantly Salesforce based context. And I'm joined today by Tracy. So Tracy, are you okay to introduce yourself to our audience for me, please? Absolutely. So um, as Tom's alluded to, I'm Tracy. Um, I work predominantly in the hospitality sector as a Salesforce consultant, um, working on all sorts of projects from ones that I build and implement myself to also working on larger projects with Salesforce partners, um, where I then support the project in terms of translating what the hospitality client is asking for into Salesforce technology and terminology. Okay, awesome. Well, it's great to have you here today. And the power of the Salesforce ecosystem, the amazing Emma Keeling connected us. So really yeah. grateful for that <laughs> and look forward to, to diving in and, and learning what this is all about. So maybe to start off, are you able to introduce your role for us really we we know it's kind of involved in hospitality and it mm -hmm. potentially spans different traditional salesforce roles like consultant admin developer maybe a bit of project manager and business analyst as well but how does that work kind of day in day out for you it makes life very varied which is why yeah. i got myself <laughs> in the first place um, I am eternally inquisitive. I love to network and there's definitely lots of opportunity for that within the Salesforce Sahana. Um, and I think having a mix of clients and a mix also of hospitality types. So sometimes I'm working with hotels, sometimes I'm working with restaurants, sometimes I'm working with hotel management companies um, mm -hmm. where the tech can be very, very challenging. Um, so it, it leads for a very, very varied life. And it also means that I get to exposure to some wonderful Salesforce products as well, not just sales cloud, but also service, marketing cloud, uh, communities. So I think the power of Salesforce for hospitality is that it is unlike no other system that exists inside hospitality. Uh -huh. And I don't know whether that's the same for other verticals as well, but Salesforce is a massively innovative company. You know, I've worked in the ecosystem now 12, 13 years and first as a user and now in the roles that I do now. Um, and Salesforce has changed out of all recognition in that time. You know, Steve Moe was saying about how, you know, there were certain things that didn't even exist when he started yeah. in the ecosystem on your podcast the other day. And it's it's really important, I think, to to be aware of that when working in the hospitality vertical, because, you know, they PMS is king for hospitality, which is a property management system that mm. deals with all of the checking in, all the checking out, all of the invoices, all of the booking from all the different distribution channels, whether you've booked on booking.com or whether you've booked via a travel agent or whether you've booked on the hotel website. Yeah. So Salesforce is sat in this really innovative space but the PMS is, so one of the largest companies globally is um, Opera, which is by Oracle. Mm -hmm. and the yeah. other whole suite of PMS products. Those products haven't changed inherently in their look and feel and their function in the entire time that I've been in hospitality. And I started mm -hmm. at 17. So there's, there's, that was quite a few years ago. Um, so it's really interesting for me and really exciting to be involved with a company like Salesforce where things are evolving and moving so quickly. Um, and that's exciting for hospitality, too, because they they generally got very siloed data, old systems, some of them still using XML. Um, so it's very exciting for them, but can also be overwhelming, which I suppose is where I then uh, come in to help put things into layman's terms. Yeah, awesome. Well, that sounds like great fun and sounds like you have opportunity to make a real difference and potentially get some of your clients excited and interested about Salesforce as well, which is, I think, part of what this is all about. So that's that's great. And kind of thinking now in terms of hospitality in particular, do the requirements of the client vary dependent on what type of hospitality kind of client they are? Or 
is are there kind of common themes that's a great question and yeah absolutely and um i did some work with the salesforce travel and tra travel transport and hospitality team a little while mm -hmm. ago is understanding the ownership of a hotel is absolutely key to understanding what their tech stack might look like because i think as a consumer you go to a holiday inn and you think it's a holiday inn uh, and mm -hmm. that was where i met emma by the way at intercontinental okay. hotel um Whereas from a hotel owner perspective, that might be a Holiday Inn that's owned and run by intercontinental hotels, but it also could be a hotel that is owned by a private equity firm that then has mm -hmm. a management company that, that runs the business from an operational perspective. So if you're an owner operator, it's quite easy to understand what the tech is. You, you own the tech, so you have the yeah. rights to whether you can integrate that with anything else. Whereas if you're a management company and my background was in management companies. So we uh, one of the longest stints I spent was with a, a company that was multi brand and multi franchise. So we were working with eight different global brands and mm. all of those global brands dictate what <laughs> systems you use. Yeah. And they also control whether you can have access to that data or not. And at what point you might be able to have access to that data. So integration is a common topic because everybody wants to see the 360 degree view of the customer. Of mm -hmm. course, they do. that makes our yeah. life so much easier. Um, but whether you can get to that data is another question or not. Um, mm -hmm. And also whether that system even has an open API, which is a whole other <laughs> yeah. fish to, to, to get involved in, um, which makes life interesting um, because the, as much as there's some very similar use cases, People want to manage their pipeline. They want to see how much business their sales teams are closing. They want to know what the major reasons are for losing business, you know, mm. being able to be in contact with their customers and do a certain level of account management is all stuff that is important and is common use cases across multiple hospitality companies. But the, the tech stack of what you might be implementing that into and the I suppose also the, the budget to deliver that yeah. can vary wildly from one hospitality company to another, depending on the ownership. If some of these systems that you're integrating with are quite rigid um, and quite old, then I can understand where the challenge comes with, with integrating, because as you said, they just might not have the APIs to even do anything. Salesforce has lots of different APIs. If the system is really that old and almost legacy and maybe the client's locked into it and they, they can't do anything about switching, then I guess that presents its own challenges as well, right? Yeah, it does. I mean, I've worked with a couple of iPaaS solutions um, where mm. we've actually consumed XML messages from, you know, particular PMS systems that don't have an open API. And then we've applied some logic to that to then be able to to put it into Salesforce. But, you know, I think it's very easy in a Salesforce ecosystem. And when you're working with customers that are very innovative and have new tech stacks and that, yeah. you know, anything is possible, the world is your oyster. And yeah. that's brilliant. <laughs> that's really exciting when you get one of those projects. Yeah. But I think also there's the other side out there that sometimes you know, there are blockers, you know, or there's dirty data that you don't mm. just want to hook something up into something else because it will cause an absolute mess. You know, one of the most prominent PMS systems out there can allow you to create duplicates. Equally, that's part of the challenge to overcome that obstacle and to get the data into the right place for the customer so that they can leverage that for their sales opportunities. Yeah, totally. And as a result, hopefully get a little bit closer to that 360 degree view that Salesforce marketing team are always peddling, right? Absolutely. And I think there are some real positive stories out there as well. I'm working with a restaurant company at the moment mm. and they have integrated almost everything. So coming into Sales Cloud, we have their Wi-Fi data, we have their restaurant bookings, both individual and private functions. Uh, we have their whole sales team in the system managing all of the events uh, right through to delivering function sheets and actually getting the customers um, on site on the day and all the event planning. Mm. Um, we've also integrated the website so there's live av availability on the website so that even for functions, we can book that um, straight away. Yeah. We've got um, 
oh, the, so many things. The voucher system is integrated <laughs> so we can see who's buying vouchers. And then all of that data, because it's so rich, is being consumed by data cloud. And then that's going into marketing cloud. So then the marketing team have got so, so many ways they can segment their data to really wow the customers with mm -hmm. really perfectly timed emails with the right kind of content that actually, you know, that's, that's a real success story from, from my point of view. We are surfacing a questionnaire on a website using a link for the customers to complete all of their pre-orders and all of their event details, which will then feed directly back into Salesforce. Nice. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite an exciting project because the, the teams here have thought so innovatively around how they can leverage the technology. Well, that sounds great fun. And <laughs> sounds like it feels magical when, when you bring everything together and deliver those, those connected experiences. So that's, that's great. Kind of moving on a little bit now, but in a project and appreciate sounds like the shape of your projects is, is different um, quite often. But what type of other roles do you interact with within those projects? So we, we kind of touched on other Salesforce partners and perhaps developers, mm -hmm. um, as well as obviously the, the client. What other kind of key roles do you usually see? Do you see? Other admins, consultants, developers? Um, it tends to be that most of my projects, it's the client, me, and a Salesforce consultant that has a mix of all of those roles. Mm. Um, and I suppose the larger the project, the more resource you need to deliver that anyway. Um, yeah. I think there's a lot of, we don't probably work with as many admins because it tends to be the the simple tasks, you know, I will complete anyway, or, yeah. um, you know, we might have a build where there's some stuff going on, but for the more complicated builds, there's always a level of other stuff that needs to be done that's beyond my skill set. So we have to have a, you know, somebody that's more technical than myself involved in that to make sure that we're, we're getting things set up properly. Um, and that's been a huge learning curve for me over the years of different projects that I've been involved with, different consultants and how they approach different projects, mm, yeah. um, whether they go straight into, you know, discovery, whether there's been a proper, you know, um, not proper, that's not the word I'm looking for, but <laughs> sometimes formal. like a, a formal pre-sales yeah. requirement. Um, sometimes it's like a very woolly um, situation that you start with. Yeah. I think that's, that's not always on the side of Salesforce. Sometimes, often, that's on the side of hospitality because the vast majority of hospitality customers that I have do not have a internal IT team. Uh -huh. They might have somebody that orders new laptops for people, um, yeah. and they might have somebody that is, you know, managing a few bits and bobs or the hardware for things. Um, but quite often, even their support is outsourced to an external company. Yeah. So, you know, that can make things quite challenging when you're looking at what actually is the scope of work on this particular project, because the people describing that are sales directors, they're, you know, mm. marketing teams that are very creative and, you know, creating ad adverts and copy and all sorts of wonderful things. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But not necessarily understanding how to write SQL query in marketing cloud or yeah. even what that means. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's important, I think, to to deal with all of these people in the, the Salesforce partners. And there are a lot of roles that we, we come into contact with because we need the developers, we need the consultants, we need mm -hmm. a technical architect to make sure that the architecture of the whole project makes sense from start to yeah. end, particularly when there's a lot of integrations. Um, but I think also, you know, it's quite interesting from the client side as to who sometimes gets involved in those projects and who who the leads are that are oftentimes in in hospitality not particularly technical um mm. without, you know dissing the whole hospitality <laughs> they just want to do the best they can with the smallest resources they've got <laughs> yeah no totally get that and it's quite interesting that um it sounds like the majority of them have their it outsourced i think you would see that in other industries like maybe retail as well mm -hmm. um so might might 
brain is kind of firing in all directions now and trying to make these connections, these similarities. So really enjoying this conversation and maybe thinking about this now from, from your point of view, do you just exclusively work with people or clients in the hospitality sector or do you venture into kind of other industries as well? So I have ventured into other industries and uh, this is why I love the power of networking because mm. um, during COVID, there was obviously a little bit of a situation in hospitality in the yeah. in <laughs> yeah. um, and there were quite a lot of contacts that I've worked with in the past who moved on to other industries purely because of the, the situation they found themselves in and the mm. requirement to pay their mortgages. Um, and then as they've moved into other industries and required sales force, um, they've then asked my advice on something or they've asked me if I can get involved in the project. Um, I've done a couple of nonprofit um, pieces of work because uh -huh. either Emma's not had capacity and we work quite closely <laughs> together. Yeah. Um, or I did some pro bono work during COVID because I can't stand not being busy. So I worked yeah. with um, UK Harvest, which is a food bank and food education charity clear really near to where I live so mm. I did some work with them and I continue to do some some work with them actually um I also did some work with a procurement company who um were basically helping hospitality clients procure better um nice. so that was a really interesting project because I'd never worked in in that vertical before and then they ended up recommending me to somebody that worked in energy so green energy and carbon consultancy okay um, which is like stepping into the crystal maze. Um, <laughs> I yeah. had a brilliant project with them. We, we've had some brilliant times. Um, and last week she phoned me with a question and I was just like, you need to show me again what we built because it's been a year yeah. I can't remember. <laughs> and it's like my brain's falling out my ear. So <laughs> it was, um, yeah, yeah it, it all comes with its challenges. But that's, again, the beauty of Salesforce. It can mm. be like, for so many different use cases that you know that that actually makes things really malleable and really exciting for me because variety is the spice of life yeah exactly well I think that's that's great to hear and kind of in between the lines there the power of your network or the power of having successful clients leads to other successful clients right so and, yeah yeah right. I think that's that's really important too so if there's anybody out there that's listening to this and they're looking to start out in a Salesforce based role within hospitality, what kind of tips advice would you give to that person? That's a really good question. Um, <laughs> I would certainly say use the power of your network mm. because, you know, I set up my own business after being made redundant from a, a UK role with a um, hotel management company. And my first piece of business was the hotels that were being sold, which was why I was made in, being made redundant, was my first build <laughs> that I built Salesforce for them as my first. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so it's it was the power of my network in that situation and, you know, working with those teams that brought me my first customer. They're still a customer today. And that was nearly eight years ago. Mm. Um, so, you know, that. And the amount of recommendations they've given me, I'll be eternally grateful for. So it's it's one of those things, I think, that network is everything. And also, you know, that is also a two-way street. Yeah. So I always try and reach out to anybody that needs help if there's something that I can add value to what they're asking for. Uh -huh. Because then if you're prepared to give your time for things and you're prepared to put yourself out there, then when you do ask for help, it's more likely that you will then get response to that. So yeah, exactly. I'm a really big believer that it needs to be a two way street. And, you know, if you do a job well and you will treat people with kindness, that hopefully that will come back to you. Yeah, exactly. And I, I love how we come back to kindness there, because I think that's really important to be kind to yourself, but also be kind to your clients and your, and your customers. And eventually that will start paying for itself like that that will have the positive impact. So yeah. I think that's great. And now taking a brief moment to kind of reflect on your journey so far within hospitality. Mm -hmm. If you were to start out again, would you do anything differently or approach it in a 
different way, for example. So I heard you ask this of somebody else on one of your other mm. um, episodes. <laughs> it, I've been thinking about it all day because yeah. I, I'm also a yoga teacher. So I also very much mm -hmm. live my life in the moment. Um, yeah. And I've always kind of... I really do believe that I wouldn't be where I am today doing what I'm doing if I hadn't have had all of the experiences and the obstacles that I had to overcome in order to get here. Um, mm. And I really love what I do right now. You know, I've got a huge difference of things that happen in a day, in a week, in a month. You know, I've got different interests. I, I can balance all of those, which is brilliant. And I'm always learning, which for an inquisitive mind is really important. So there are things I could have done differently, but then I wouldn't mm -hmm. have had the learning from that thing. Yeah. And then I wouldn't be here. So I kind of, I kind of feel it's a no hashtag no regrets. I don't know <laughs> I'm really big headed, but I think, you know, I've made some really big mistakes, but I've yeah. made them and then I've recovered from them, which is ultimately made me stronger. So I think they had to happen to bring me on my journey. Mm. And I think that's, uh, powerful strong message like i I've, I've made mistakes as well as as well as the, the the next person but i think it's not necessarily the mistake that matters the thing that matters is recovering from that mistake being yeah. honest with the client and going sometimes along with them on the journey to fix the mistake mm -hmm. as well so you not only learn something along the way but they learn something as well do you think that's important I really do think that that is important. Um, I've made some humdingers of mistakes over my career from when I was a teenager and I double booked a wedding, um, <laughs> which I have to front up and, and deal with, um, through to uh, forgetting that there was a European date format in Data Loader when I was first introduced. Oh, to wow. Uh, which caused quite a lot of mess, which I then obviously fixed for free. Um, <laughs> so there's always things that you can learn. And it, it's mm. what do with that mistake how you are transparent with your customer around what's happened um is absolutely vital for developing relationships with people in my opinion so yeah it, i'm completely in agreement with you on that one yeah awesome okay well that's that's great to hear and now kind of flipping back a little bit to somebody who's thinking about perhaps pursuing a, a salesforce based role within hospitality if there were like typical skills or attributes that you would use to describe that person, what words come to mind, like curiosity, confidence, like what, what type of things do you think are important? I think curiosity is really important because particularly if you're flying solo, you have to make sure that you keep up to date with everything that's going on in the Salesforce ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what's happening with the releases, making sure that you're staying on top of, if you've got certs, you're staying on top of your um, your yearly exams and what have you. So I think that that's really important because Salesforce changes so quickly. If you're not curious about what changes, you very quickly end up creating things with technical debt, which is not good for your customers. Um, mm. so that's really important. I think something else that is really crucial for working in hospitality is being able to flex your style for different types of stakeholders that you're going to come mm -hmm. across. Yeah. That's probably true for a lot of other industries as well. Um, but, you know, if I'm dealing with an event planner one day who's stressing about whether her function sheet works or not, I'm dealing with a CTO the next day, if there is one, sometimes there is, sometimes there yeah. isn't. Um, you know, you might be dealing with the, the chief marketing officer the next day. You might be dealing mm -hmm. with a sales manager the day after that or somebody, you know, saying they've forgotten their password again, or I don't know why, but I'm locked out. I'm, I wonder why you're locked out. You've been locked in more than three times. Um, so, yeah, it, it's being able to flex your style and being able to articulate sometimes what can be quite complex. Like Salesforce talk in their own language. Mm. And, um, they, you know, they change names for things quite regularly, which can be yeah. quite confusing for customers. Um, and I think particularly with the customers that I come across, they need to understand what it means for them in real life when they're mm. dealing with whatever it is they're dealing with, you know, whether it is creating a function sheet, whether it is, um, you know, dealing with an, a request for a proposal or, you know, 
whether they've got a new local corporate customer that they're trying to sign up and how they then look at what's contracted versus what has actually been delivered from that customer. You know, they need to be a you need to be able to train and describe how Salesforce will work mm. for them in a mm. way that is real for for what their users are going to experience on a day to day basis. And I suppose that's my sweet spot because my background is in hospitality. Nice. I can, you know, understand what's what they need to do outside of Salesforce to then make the Salesforce piece of it more relevant. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's great to hear. And reflecting on a couple of things that you said there, the technical debt thing, mm-hmm. a very wise client of mine once told me um, or kind of pointed out to me, really, Salesforce create technical debt. <laughs> and, true. And, and once I realized that and accepted that, I was like, okay, yeah, well, like they, they do like think about user access policies that are coming out and all of the, I don't know, apex triggers and flows that currently assign permission sets that are now going to become technical debt as a result of that, you know? So I think that that's maybe a, a reverse perspective on that. And yeah, really relate to the, the Salesforce um, marketing machine that, that keeps on turning and they, they do love a name change. I'm pretty sure at this point, I'm convinced every six months they play bingo and roll out some <laughs> words and then they, they they decide okay actually this product is now called this and you know it's marketing cloud engagement not to be confused by marketing cloud account engagement yeah um so one cool part of this year <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah exactly so i think that's that's a great message and i'm gonna kind of sneak in a, a bonus question now but salesforce are doing a lot of stuff within the industry space and Right now, I'm working for a, a non-profit partner, and we're navigating the world of non-profit cloud versus the the kind of old-style non-profit success pack. Yeah, and and Salesforce are kind of grouping this under the industry's banner now. Do they do much for hospitality? Is there a hospitality cloud per se, or is there kind of any offering there? No, there isn't, and I think um, I think it's because it's quite a hard sell. Mm. Because, you know, it because of the ownership that I explained earlier, um, it's not always easy to see from the set of accounts that they get given each time yeah. they do the the re um uh, the rejig each each financial year. Uh-huh. It's not easy to see actually who owns those hotels. So quite often, because my background is working with these people and I've got a lot of contacts in the industry, quite often I'll get a phone call from one of the account execs at Salesforce going, do you know anything about this hotel? And you're like, yeah, don't worry about them. They already have it. You just don't know that they have it because they're owned by a management company and the management yeah. company Salesforce. So they're not going to buy it again. So I can save you some time there. But I know, yeah. sure, this company is still working on Excel spreadsheets and they need it. So yeah, yeah. go after them. <laughs> so if I can help, as I said, you know, you've got to give to get, haven't you? So mm. if I can help people in any way like that, I always will. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's great to know. And now thinking about this as an opportunity to perhaps demiss something about hospitality or, or working with hospitality clients. Like mm. when you you meet a new person and you tell them that you're working with hospitality, do they often kind of come to perhaps a common misconception or, or myth about hospitality? I think most of the things that I come across, I've mentioned already, mm. um, you know, the ownership of the hotel is something that always surprises people. They think that all holiday inns are holiday inns and all holiday yeah. inns are all <laughs> buses. And actually there's all sorts of different ownerships across those two brands alone. Um, I think the other thing that people get really surprised about for the people that I meet in the Salesforce Ohana is a lot of those people are so tech savvy and you know mm-hmm. Salesforce is vast it blows my mind like the amount of things yeah. the amount of products that they have now is so many acquisitions that nobody can possibly know everything about Salesforce in my opinion um, yeah. but I think it's sometimes the smallest things can blow blow the minds in in the hospitality sector because they're dealing with such old tech and such silent mm. data like I worked in a, a hotel group in the early noughties where the spa data did not connect to the front desk. No. The golf data did not connect to the front desk. 
the meeting and events data did not connect to the front desk. So the front desk had their PMS system to do all the the room check-ins and check-outs. Mm. But everything else was its siloed data. So there was, you know, all these meetings that had to happen and all this paperwork that was transferred between departments so that when somebody was checking in, the receptionist knew whether they'd also booked a spa appointment or whether they'd, they'd booked a tea time or whether they actually had a meeting in, in the conference centre. So I think people are still surprised that there are hotels out there now that are still in that situation where their data is completely siloed. Um, yeah. But I think that's a real opportunity to evolve um, if there's the appetite to do so. Yeah, and there's definitely lots of different ways Salesforce can help. The other thing as well is like Salesforce is used across so much of the world right now that when someone's mm -hmm. arriving at a hotel, they expect the service to be whatever service they've had just previously, whether yeah. it's service from their bank, service from Amazon, service from Sweaty Betty, service from booking their car in for a repair. You know, yeah. everything is so connected that you can't just compare yourselves to other hotels or to other restaurants now. You have to compare yourself to any service anywhere ever because Salesforce is in all of those places. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think uh, a recent example of that, I, I have a couple of pairs of Doc Martins and emailed Doc Martins and got a, a response back and I knew straight away, okay, they're, they're using Salesforce. Yeah. Because uh, that, that's the case auto response I've just got with the case number in it. So, yeah, yeah I guess that kind of connectedness, like especially when we're talking about a service context, is is important. And mm. you're, you're right, like people do kind of start to expect that, but you know, you've had that from one hotel or, or one provider. So why shouldn't I have it from, from another one? So I think it's a case of people trying to keep up with each other yeah. and make sure that their systems and everything and experiences are connected as well, because obviously you, you might be engaging with a, the brand on TikTok and then on booking.com or mm -hmm. uh, on their own website, you know, those experiences are potentially different and it's kind of about bringing those experiences together as well, don't you think? Yeah, completely. And you've hit the nail on the head there, you know, booking.com, everything's automated, you know, everything look, looks shiny. You then perhaps book on the hotel website and you don't get the same experience, but you're booking the same hotel. And, you know, yeah. distribution channels for hotels are vast. Um, so it it's, yeah, I think it's crucial to keep up using booking.com as another example like recently booked to go somewhere and a couple of days before got a friendly email telling me what the weather was like in my destination yeah. you know <laughs> now I expect that from every hotel that I book at because oh. that's what booking.com does so and I think it's it's important and, and I think that's where other Salesforce tools like um, data cloud and, and marketing cloud can really kind of shine by bringing that information together within data cloud and then activating it for those personalized marketing journeys. So I think that's yeah. really great um, and helps to deliver the, the Salesforce vision of, of customer 360 for sure. So that's awesome. Um, unfortunately, we are now bringing today's episode to a close, but before we do go, what's a way for people to connect with you? And is there any particular pieces of content that you think would help people kind of navigate and understand this space a little bit more? Um, I tend to do everything on LinkedIn because mm -hmm. it's the easiest place to find my network. Yeah. Um, so I am literally just Tracy Bingham on, on LinkedIn. So I'm pre pretty easy to find me in there. And there's a picture of me stood inside a hollow tree. So <laughs> that's enough to stand out. <laughs> um, in terms of content, it's a really interesting one because most of the content I consume is Salesforce content because I'm trying to keep up to date with Salesforce, not necessarily content because there's not that many use cases uh, that are out there that is specific to hospitality, I don't think. Um, yeah. Or not that I've come across anyway. Um, but if anyone's ever got any questions, I'm always happy to help. Um, thanks again for your time today. And hopefully we will inspire some more people to be more hospitality. So thanks again. I'd like some more friends if that's possible. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> friends, are, friends are good. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks.